Hello and welcome to the session in which we would look at information technology as it relates to the CPA exam to be more specific the BEC section. IT is an important topic on the BEC section so before you sit for the exam you want to make sure you are comfortable with this topic. In this session specifically I will focus on the IT information technology what's information technology then I will talk a little bit more about management information system and under management information system would we'll look at accounting information system as well as ERP which is enterprise resource planning. Now before we start if you are a CPA candidate and most likely if you are listening to me right now you are a CPA candidate. So if you are a CPA candidate, please take a look at my website, farhatlectures.com. I don't replace your CPA review course. Any course that you are taking that you see on your screen, I can't replace it. I won't be able to. I would love to, but I can't. But well, here's what I can do. I can be a useful addition to you. I can add 10 to 15 points to your CPA exam score. How? Well, I will explain the material in a different way. I can give you resources that you can practice that's different than your CPA review course. So by doing so, I'll help you understand the material better. So once you get to your CPA review course, it will make more sense and you can study much, much more efficiently. And here is your risk. One month of subscription. Your return is possibly passing the exam. Are you willing to take that risk? And if not for anything, Check out my website to determine to see how well or not well your university doing on the CPA exam. Please look at my other courses. I do have other courses, other CPA sections. Connect with me on LinkedIn if you haven't done so. And take a look at my LinkedIn recommendations. Students that used my CPA lectures and resources to pass the exam. Like this recording. Connect with me on Instagram and Facebook. Let's go ahead and get started. What is information technology. What is this IT? Well, IT is basically the use of computers to do what? To store information, to retrieve that information, to transmit that information, and to manipulate this information, this data, into some useful, usable business decision. So basically, it will help, it will help support our business decision and communicate this information, either people within the company or outside party. This is what basically an IT structure would look like. And simply, simply in IT, when we say in IT, we're looking at computers, computers network, and the use of computer programs that run those computers and computers networks themselves. Now, what's the purpose of an IT? Well, obviously, it's to help us, a human, in routine processing transaction. So transaction processing, that's one thing that they do. So rather than manually enter the transaction, maybe you'll find a faster way to do it through an IT and assist us in decision making. And this is important when because it's going to provide us report and it's going to provide more than reports. But usually reports will assist us. We can look at data and aggregate and make the appropriate decision. Now, there are five basic components of IT. And those are basic terms. You might be familiar with them, but you want to be when before sitting for the exam. The first one is hardware. What is a hardware? Well, it's, there are physical items you can touch that compromise a computer system. Now, what could they be? Well, think of hardware as what? Any, anything that you can see and touch. Look, this is a picture of them. Okay, so printers, uh, zip drive, keyboards, a mouse, a video camera, the, the monitor, everything that you can touch is called a hardware. Now, also, we have we need software. What is software? Well, think of software, Excel, Windows. Those are software, uh, Chrome, PowerPoint. What is a software? Well, it's an in something intangible you cannot really touch. OK, what it does, it's a collection of in instruction that's going to help run the hardware. So that's what it do. It it's going to instruct the hardware what to do. Examples are right in front of you. Any software is is a software like I'm trying to explain it, but uh, in a circle. So it's it's instructions that help you do something on the computer. It runs the computer for you. Also, we need to be familiar with the idea of a network. What is a network? Well, it's two or more computers, two or billions of computers for that matter that are linked in order to share resources, exchange files and allow electronic communication. Well, the most obvious example of a network is the Internet. The Internet is a bunch of computers connected together that can share all sorts of things, files, videos, audio, pictures, you name it, data, 
okay so network may be linked through cables telephone lines i remember when the internet started it was linked through telephone line that's the only way you would get to the internet could be through radio waves satellites infrared light beams and who knows in the future what will get, what it's going to look like okay but this is what the internet now you want to differentiate between the internet and intranet intranet are also computer network for sharing information same purpose collaborating operational system and other computing services it's just simply put it's a computer network but it's only accessible to the people at a certain location or a certain company so outsiders cannot access intranet intranet so it's basically it's a network within your own company okay data what is data and we're going to talk a lot about data down the road there's a lot to learn in BEC about data data is basically information stored on a hardware it doesn't have to be on a hardware it could be on a paper then you can transfer it so data is not instruction data is not a software you, you the, the data you know you you would take the data and input the data into the software but the data is not a software so basically raw data this is just basically numbers raw data sales figures inventory figures number of likes on on, on a picture number of clicks on a page so on and so forth Again, we'll talk about data much, much later on. And obviously, the fifth component is people. Anyone who uses a computer, which is any hardware, but simply put, we are dealing with computers. You and I are, are computer users, are people. You have IT professional, accounting, HR, payroll, so on and so forth. So those are the five basic components of IT. Now, here's what's going to happen. If we take those five basic components, hardware, software, data, people, plus procedures, to achieve and you know apply procedures to achieve organizational objective we're going to call this business information system now we have a business information system computer hardware software all working together and bis and bis serve all levels of a company hr payroll advertising recruiting sales anyone would like to have an a, uh, a bis system okay so the bis system they have really three strategic functions it's going to help assist business processes like um, uh, creating a sales order it's going to assist with decision making for example if you have a list of receivables and you can you can age them and you, you know if anyone that's that said uh, they're not paying their bill you may not grant them sales on credit so it, it will assist you in decision making it assists you in planning for for the future like budgeting and long-term planning and strategic planning so any information any information system or business information system usually perform four tasks okay and let's go through them manually they're common sense but you really want to know them first it has an input task so be, the first thing in it for a business information system is to capture this data from the outside of the entity now how do you capture the data you either scan it you 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 you, uh, you type it on a keyboard um you uh, sometimes voice recognition can input the data the first you have to input the data two once you once the data is inside the system then through the software you can start to do processing and transformation it's going to convert the data into some useful information for decision making but that's not good enough we want this data we want this output you have to communicate the results to interested parties either internal or external through a screen or through a paper or through an email or through a file you have to communicate this information and obviously you have to store this information store this data preserve it before you input it during the input and we'll talk about this later on how do you make sure it's you're inputting the right data and after processing whether you want to keep it temporarily or permanently Okay, so this is what BIS, generally speaking, a business information system is. Okay, now we have various types of business information system, and now we're going to be a little bit, little bit more specific. We're, we might have, you know, for example, management information system is a type of business information system. We have accounting information system. We're going to see it's part of the management information system. And we have an enterprise resource planning, which is basically in a different type of MIS okay so those are the three type of business information system that you will need to be familiar with for the cpa exam starting with mis or management information system what is a management information system it's a computer system consisting of hardware and software just like the bis hardware software and people that serves the backbone of the organization operation it's serving what your need 
Okay, what could be your need? You want to gather data, analyze the information and report the data for the help and business decision. Just the same as business information system. Now we are a little bit more specific management information system. So the purpose is to is, is improve decision making by providing up to date, accurate data on the variety of organizational assets including you want to make sure you have information about your accounting information about financial like capital budgeting and we'll talk about the accounting part in a moment because we're going to have accounting information system as a subsystem inventory a personnel like payroll benefit manufacturing you want to know about your raw material work in process inventory maybe we'll go under manufacturing as well marketing you want to know about sales forecasting so on and so forth so simply put mis collects the data stores it that makes it accessible to managers who want to use this data to run the report and run the company now this is what an mis is now you will notice here we said one of them it's going to be erp we're going to see the difference between mis and an erp we'll see that in a moment okay now let's talk about accounting information system accounting information system is a subset so here what we're dealing with is a subset of the management information system of the company. So accounting information system is a subsystem of MIS that perform routine, highly structured financial transaction relevant to the financial and managerial accounting aspect of the company. So we can break AIS in two or three main parts. We could have a general ledger component of it, which is the financial reporting system. And this would record transaction with external parties like sales, purchases, that's going to be reflected in the financial statements that are prepared in accordance with GAAP, like what? Income statement, balance sheet, statement of cash flow, so on and so forth. It could also have a management reporting system. And from the name management reporting system, it'll provide information useful for the internal management. For example, we want to know how much something is costing us for our own purposes. That will be in our cost accounting system and the preparation of related reports that we can run the company, like pro forma financial statements, budget, cost, volume, profit analysis, and other internal reports. So it can be broken down into those two components. And the third component is transaction processing, which we'll need to talk about this more down the road. We'll have one whole recording about transaction processing. But let's talk about ERP. So remember, AIS is a subunit, so this could be AIS, like a subunit of the system. Now, what is an ERP? Well, this is an ERP. An ERP, simply put, all those systems, all those subsystems, whether it's accounting information system, finance, manufacturing, purchases, customer web portal, they're all interconnected together. Once they are all interconnected, we call the MIS an enterprise resource planning. It's basically an advanced system of an MIS. So why, why would we say this? For example, I'm not, I'm not going to say back in the old days, some companies still use this. For example, a company might have a QuickBooks. It's a software. So for example, their accounting information system is called QuickBooks. Then for finance, they would use, I, I don't know, they, I'm just going to make this up to kind of make the point, Quicken. Okay, no companies will use that unless you're Skyler at uh, Breaking Bad, right? Uh, they would use Quicken for their finances and QuickBooks for their accounting. So notice they're the same company, but let's assume, you know, obviously you can integrate them if you want to, but let's assume they're not integratable. So you, they're using two different software. They're using two different software and they might use for purchasing, they might use Pro Purchase. There, there's no such a thing. I just made up the software. So notice they're using one for purchasing. This is which is one part of the MIS. They're using the software. QuickBooks is a different software. Quicken is a third software. So notice they, they're like kind of separated. ERP will solve this problem. ERP is one integrated system. So when you heard the word ERP, think of integration. It's, it's a system that's integrated of the main business processes. The point is it's everything is integrated. So when the customer comes into the customer portal and input the information, that information will go to sales that will automatically because all the systems communicate with each other. They will go to finance. It will, if they place an order, it will go to the manufacturing. It's so this whole thing, it's all integrated. That's that's the beauty of it. You can think of SAP, Oracle and G, JD Edwards. Those are the big ERPs that are known on the market. And it will continuously in real time update what's going on within the business. So once once an, once a customer placed the order, it goes to manufacturing, purchasing, finance. So we know what's going on, what we need to do. 
Okay, it uses common database maintained by a database management system. And it's common, it means you have to put the information once and share this information with everybody else. It can track the business resources all continuously, cash, raw material, production. So as soon as we need to buy something, let's assume we need to buy something because a customer, place an, a customer places an order, we made the sale, it goes to sales. It tells us we made the sale. Now we need to manufacture the item. It will tell the manufacturing uh, unit or the manufacturing software, we need to manufacture this item. The manufacturer software might place a purchase order for that for that transaction because we need raw material, and and it might tell us it might tell financing that we need to finance this transaction. So notice one transaction keeping track of all this continuously up to date. So management know what's going on within their orders, purchases, payroll, so on and so forth. That's the beauty of ERP. So the whole system communicate with each other. Um, when we say back office function in ERP, it's the application that connect all these systems together within the company itself. It's called back office function versus a front end functions. Fr think of front, front end function if we're looking at this picture is your customer web portal because the cus uh, the customer web portal is it's 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 a portal it's a it's a door or it's a window whatever you want to call it a door or a window that connect your external parties now when you input your simply put when you buy something online what you do is you input your name your address your credit card information what you are doing is you are using a front office function you're inputting this information in the company's database and if they have an ERP, that information will go to different places all at once. But the it's called the front office functions. Okay, so it's external parties inputting the information. And the beauty of ERP, you're using one system, one application with unified interface. So it looks the same everywhere. And frankly, when I was in audit, when 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 we were dealing with SAP, it will be very easy because it easy for us, easy for people who are pulling report because using SAP, you can pull any report you want to because SAP is an ERP. All the functions of the business are integrated. So whatever you're looking for, one person, as long as they have access, by the way, of course, they have to have access versus if you are dealing with different software, I still remember this story where, 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 where um, the manager, they had to use two different computers to pull two different reports because they had one old system on one computer and one new system on a new computer and they don't communicate therefore it's like it's like two different computers they have to have two in order to pull all the reports that we wanted versus a sap just one click you get everything that you need at the end of this recording i'm going to invite you again to visit my website farhatlectures.com once again i don't replace your beloved cpa review course i can't i wish but i can't no no not i wish it's fine i'm not going to wish for that but I can be a useful addition. Consider, uh, consider subscribing. It's worth it. Good luck and stay safe until we get those vaccines.